we're going to talk about Kenya. Uh, like, obviously, you you got kind of a pretty damn good time in the early round. In the final, did you ever expect to get like as fast as twelve seventy two? Of course, that you know the hurdles are seven centimeters shorter than the senior ones, but at the same time, you know it was pretty mad. Like to see twelve seventy two on the clock, thinking, "Geez, that's quick." Yeah, well, um, no. If I'm being honest, I wasn't wasn't expecting a time like that. I was hoping to go a little bit quicker than um, my semi final. But on the day of the final in the warm up, I actually had a lot of pain in my my hip, my hip flexors, um, to the point where even doing a trail leg was was, you know, I couldn't actually get my trail leg to go around. So I had to end my warm up a lot earlier. Even when I got onto the track, I couldn't even do a, you know, when you set your blocks up and you do like a quick run through of over two hurdles, couldn't even do that. So I wasn't feeling at my best form, had my shoulder as well. Um, so I wasn't feeling at my best form, but for me, the important thing was, was to get the medal. Um, and I'm happy that during the race, I had the Jamaican Vashawn who was next to me on my right and I could see his presence. And for me, I just wanted to get the medal. You know, it wasn't about getting another world record because I did that in the semis. I just wanted to get the medal, but having him next to me and he was running a bloody good race um, and I was feeling his presence. So I was like, look, I got to run fast, like body pain or no body pain. I got to get this medal. Um, and I feel like that's the mindset that I had. And it helped a lot to get through the race. You know, even I had, if I had a bit of pain um, and then a the moment I saw him fall off and then I was like, all right, we'll just got to finish the race. Try to stay clean, try to stay clean. Don't hit any hurdles. Finished my last hurdle, did the dip, saw the time. And it took a little bit of a while to realize that it said seven, seven, two or seven, three, whatever it clocked on. And then I realized at the time that I didn't, I was like, damn, like that's that's a pretty good time. That's a pretty good time. Like low hurdles and no hurdles, that's a pretty good time. And I was happy with it. I was stoked. What kind of reactions did you get at like the end? Did you get like messages from people which you never expected? And you're thinking, oh man, this is pretty crazy. I had I had the big dog Grant Holloway message me, um, which was oh, a, you're really sorry, yeah. Yeah. I was I was absolutely stoked about that. Cause he's he's probably the big man right now in the hurdles, you know, eight, 12, 8, 1 over the real high hurdles, world records being 12, 8. Um, so he's, he's there and he's probably going to break it sometime soon. Um, so that was a, a, a serious, serious message moment. But then I also had my idol, Devon Robles, who sent me a message. He didn't send me a message. He sent my coach a message to send a congratulations to me. Um, and that also, that got me way overjoyed. So that was dope. But then also just the messages from, from fans out there, you know, I'm, couldn't respond to, to everyone because there's a lot of messages, but knowing that you have so much people supporting you and, and congratulating you and behind you, that was a, a, an amazing feeling as well. Is it pretty crazy that you're going to make in these waves at like 19? And I know, you know, like for Bolt, for example, did this at such a young age as well, but you're not just winning, you're, you know, you're setting records when you are winning as well. So you're going to make in that statement, you know, people are going to look back and say, oh, if Sasha Zoya holds this record from 20 years in the future. And that must be kind of mad, I guess, kind of when you're kind of out of Kenya and you're, you're out of that bubble and going into kind of the off season soon that you'll be able to reflect and go, yeah, actually, damn, that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I feel like for now I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what I've done. Um, but you know, we see a lot of people who are, who are good in the junior uh, under 18 ranks who don't get to make it through to the, to the next level, which is the, the most important level, the, the senior ranking. Um, I feel like if I can, Put my name in the books in the senior ranking whether that is as a world record holder in the senior books or you know a gold medal holder at world champs indoor champs or an olympic games that's when i would look back on on what i did as a junior and be like okay well to me that means more because it was an actual progression to my full career rather than right now i'm like okay that's a it's a good good step or good engraving the stone but i want more i want to be one of the greatest of all time on the hurdles um not just as a under 18 or as an under or a junior you know so why the hurdles? Hurdles was the, the first event that I got technical with. Um, Mum was loving hurdles when I was younger. So, um, and I wasn't the fastest on the hurdles. I was second on the hurdles. Um, so we're like, let's get technical on the hurdles because hurdles is something where if you're good technically, you're going to be faster than the person who's just quick naturally. Um, so we got technical with that. And um, I don't know, I just, I just love the fact that I can gain more speed in the hurdles just by learning technique rather than trying to gain more speed. Um, so then ever since then, I guess I had a, a, a good base of understanding what hurdle technique was and it may have put me a little bit in front. So stuck with the hurdles a little bit, but I was also vaulting and, and continuing the sprints at the same time. So 
I don't know. I, just, I like I like events that are very very pretty technical because then you can find a way to get a little bit more ahead of, of the other person. Yeah. I was about to say, what's kind of the goal for you over the next? Is it to go into diamond leagues over the next year and get to that senior level and see, you know, what happens continental kind of tours as well? Yeah. Well, next next goal is to to have hopefully a smooth a smooth passage on on from ninety nines to one and six. That's the first goal. But then. Look, there's a huge amount of competitions next year. There's the indoors, the world Europeans, and the and the world outdoors. Uh, so look, there's big comps. Um, obviously, if I can qualify myself, that's the that's the goal number one. But then also get into the diamond leagues, get into the real competitions, and take on some of the best guys. Um, I'm going to be the underdog because I am the young one. But look, age doesn't mean a thing when you're in the senior rank. So it's it's there for everyone to everyone to win. So what do you make of the competition out there? What do you, I mean, I'm guessing you must know some of the guys pretty well. Um, but also, like, I think with athletics more than a lot of other sports, I mean, you saw what Hansel Parchment did with that volunteer out in Tokyo and, like, that humanity side of it. And you're just thinking, oh, man, this is pretty cool to be competing against them. It's showtime when, like, you're on the track. But off it, I'm guessing you guys must be pretty damn good friends. Yeah, absolutely. You know, everyone's friendly until it's it's right behind the block and that's the moment where everyone's you know very focused it's one versus one versus one versus one versus one but it's only like that for about 13 seconds and then as soon as you're done past the line and you know, everyone's everyone's mates again and that's what i love about track and field you know you can be you're you're normally going to be friendly with most of the guys even if it's your number one you know enemy enemy as i say you know you're one-on-one competitor um as soon as it's done the race is done then cool it's done you know you can you can kick back and and be friends again you know and that's that's what's good about our sport you know there's not an ongoing there is an ongoing rivalry but it's not an uh, a vicious rivalry i'll say so what about you know next year and competing against them and how excited are you to actually be on the same track with the seniors and how do you think you're gonna you know be up against them you, you mentioned kind of you the underdog when you're young but obviously but you also said you know being such a young age is you know if you're good enough you're old enough exactly exactly um i feel like it's going to be the first couple of meets i'm going to be a little bit of shock um because it's going to be so new for me and i'm going to be next to guys and i was like damn like two years ago i was watching you on the tv now i'm next to you so it's going to be a bit of a challenge to stay focused and and actually run my own race um but look it's a step that everyone's everyone's done everyone's made and um i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to finally you know being on the on the actual height hurdles so then if I do a performance or if I don't do a performance, there's no one's going to talk saying, you know, if I, if I do a good time, no one's going to say what's well, on a lower height hurdle because um, it's on the senior height. So it's going to be game on and uh, I'm ready for it.